Welcome to The E! Show with Neil Rabin. Founded in 2013, the EHL has become the college placement leader on the East Coast. Sit back and learn more about the next step in your junior hockey career. Welcome to The E! Show, presented by the Penalty Box Foundation. The Foundation's mission centers around their daily motto, We Take Care of our own as they help out all of those within the hockey community who've experienced a catastrophic event. Learn more at PenaltyBoxFoundation.org. What's up? My name is Neil Raven, and this is episode number 159 of The E! Show. On this week's episode, we look back on the first seven days of postseason play in the EHL and the EHLP. Starting things off in the weekly rundown, we break down what unfolded in each of the four divisions in the EHL and the three divisions of the EHLP. Further along, inside the E-Crew Fantasy Challenge, we're down to the final week of the fantasy season as Team OG looks to steal the deal on this year's title. Finally, we wrap it all up with our What to Watch For segment, circling one second round series apiece that grabs our attention. This week's episode is brought to you by Hockey Tech. The developers for the new EHL app, available now in both Apple and Google stores. And with that, let's bring in the E-Crew, Jeff and Anthony. This is the uh, penultimate, the second to last podcast of the season. We have this one and the Frozen Finals preview. How the hell did we get here? <laughs> I don't know, Neil. My GPS is uh, just signed off and I have no no clue. I'm in the river. <laughs> Anthony, your thoughts? <laughs> Where are you at? I don't know. My, my mind is scrambled. The, the, Tell us, where the, are you? The, the wheel is spinning, but the hamster's dead. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. So before we get to you know the weekly rundown, the, the fantasy, what to watch for all of our regular segments, we're going to have our own fourth segment before those this week, okay? We're going to call this the Nick Piazza segment because we have to talk about him <laughs> separate from everybody else. No, I, I have to. Whether he won or lost yesterday, the fact that this kid in four playoff games for the Express P team had 202 saves Oof. is absurd. So right? delete Thomas Walker. Now it's Nick Piazza. I, he I steals just want, the title, right? Like I just we could we could talk about it more in the week to rundown, of course, but like he needs to be recognized for what he did. Yeah, like a nine fifty seven save percentage. Like oh. he had sixty one saves yesterday. I'm sure he's at home saying like. You know, the one that went through, went in, went through my five hole, like that, that, that's, that stinks. But like he did everything he possibly could to get the defending champions the, the hardest time ever in getting by. So like, I just wanted to make sure we gave him special recognition because what he did, I mean, the save totals in the four games, 46, 49, 46, 61. That's just absurd. Oof. That's just absurd. Like he's uh, averaging I'm- 50 saves a game. I was saying they had to play the playing game to get in. So it's like he should have been gassed and he didn't show any signs of being gassed at all. He got better with more pucks he saw. I I mean, we're talking about it in the 87th coach's office. Connor McNeil is just saying he he was by far their best player when, you know, they, they beat the express three to one. He was like, but like, I just remember he said, I just remember how good he was. So it's not too much of a surprise to really see him put up that much of a fight against BJR. So uh, his efforts definitely have to be recognized because, uh, you know, he he really helped the Express stay in it, and for a while, it looked like they were going to pull off quite the upset, dethroning the defending champions. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Scrappy team only wins nine games the regular season, then pushes one of the best, if not the best, premier teams to the edge, the defending champions. That deserves a lot of credit, and it kind of goes into you know something that we'll all talk about today too, about how the regular season's one season, the postseason's another season. I know we're going to dive into all these matchups and yeah. uh, our brackets and who we picked and who <laughs> is moving on and whose brackets are destroyed. Um, yes. But that just goes to show you, Piazza, you look at his regular season numbers and look at his postseason numbers, drastically different. Uh, and credit to him for helping his Walpole Express and giving all the fans quite the entertainment and uh, just fell just short. Yeah, too bad. For sure. But with that, we will now jump into the weekly rundown. It's time for the E-Crew's Weekly Rundown. The E-Show Weekly Rundown is brought to you by the Junior Hockey Podcast, your home for junior hockey news, knowledge, and nonsense. Check them out at tjhpodcast.com. All right, so where to begin? Um, It doesn't feel like it was only seven days, (laughs) 
right? Where do we it begin? Feel, feels like a month. <laughs> that feels like that first round was like a month off all of all of our lives, right? They always um, do. Then we show up at Schneider and we're like, hey, we're here. All right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we are recording this on, on Tuesday the 14th to drop it on the 15th. So we'll start by acknowledging that the first round is 99% done. Um, but we had to record this before. The second round also began because we have a Wolves Lumberjacks EHLP series that's not quite over yet. You guys, I'm not sure if you can see on my window, Jeff, but you know my oh, snow. Yo, pouring it's all, snow. Pouring snow. There you go. Yeah, you, you know my saying, right? It's pouring rain down here, bud. No snow. Yeah, I, I wish it was because the Wolves could have probably made it to Vermont. But as you mm. work further north, that rain becomes snow, and there was yeah. no way the Wolves were going to make it there for game three today. So that game three is tomorrow, the same day that we have a game one in the EHL Railers versus chiefs. So I think let's start there in the central um, and start with the Railers who we had talked about this in the, in the weeks leading up to the playoffs, despite clinching their number one seed, they really never let their foot off the gas. And this past Thursday, all eight first round series in the EHL began on Thursday. Perfect. That's the first day you could play. makes a lot of sense. Yep. You look at this for the score is all after the first period. One one, one nothing, boom, 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 five nothing. <laughs> like is this team like is it do you give them credit for not letting their foot off the gas because it made them that much more prepared for the playoffs? Yeah, I think so. I mean, like we said, you want to be that was an argument we had on one of our last regular season episodes was what's like the perfect way to go into the postseason on a huge rip on a huge, you know, long winning streak, uh, kind of 500, maybe slightly a little over 500. I think we all kind of agreed like seven and three, if you want to look at your past 10 was yep. what you should be at. But yeah, I mean, the Railers have stayed locked in, uh, showed that against the Connecticut rough riders took care of them pretty quickly. And now they'll take on the chiefs. We'll see what that series is, is has in store. Um, you can never take anybody lightly, especially a, uh, in division opponent that you see so much in the Connecticut Chiefs. So, I mean, we're going to get to the other series too. <laughs> Go look at the season records with some of these series and how they turned out. They mean absolutely nothing. A three game yeah. series is totally different. Um, but yeah, the Railers, they got plenty of coal in their engines. They're chugging. Uh, the Chiefs Railers matchup is a rematch, of course, of last year's Central Division finals that went to three games also. And the Railers have eventually won that to to punch their ticket to Providence. Uh, the Chiefs in Rhode Island, that was one of three series that we'll get to where the team that won game one didn't win the series. Hmm. Credit to the Chiefs. They 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 never let up hope and, and ultimately fought the whole way back. And now they're in the second round. Who's who's the X factor for them, Anthony? For the Connecticut Chiefs? I mean, yes. uh I guess it starts with one of their leading goal scorers and Ethan Lim. Yep. I mean, uh, I think, I think for the chiefs offense has, or scoring has kind of come at a premium for them where they usually have to scrap for goals. And he's usually the one that will find himself at the top of the score sheet. Yeah, I yep. think Max uh, Morris, another one too, you got to look at Max Morris, uh, Globitz with Rossi he won the championship with the, the Boston Junior Rangers last season with the took, EHLP yep. team took the words right out of my mouth. They, you know, he's got a, <laughs> he's got playoff experience. No, it's it's true. Um, and those other guys, I mean, that's a team that we've talked about during the regular season. They they struggled to score consistently. They were one of the lowest goal scoring teams uh, in the league, but they didn't let in a whole heck of a lot of goals either. So um, I think the goaltending is also going to be a huge factor for them. Um, because that's what it was all year long. And actually Yost got all the starts too for the Chiefs in the um in their first round series too. So looks like it's it's his net. Well, uh, because we saw... remember Yost also played in that wild card game against the 87s, and while they, they lost that game, he was spectacular in goal. Right. He he was stonewalling the 87s pretty much the entire game, hanging on to that lead until you know, the 87s tied it up. They won it in overtime, but like he, he was spectacular. And I think that game gave him a taste of, you know, postseason playoff hockey and what it means to be on your A game every single day. Yeah. So I think that, uh, I mean, Stefan Kuhanek, all time wins leader in the EHL, I think Yos can uh, give him a run for his money and really make it a good goaltending duel. 
Yeah. And, yeah. and it was, it was a good combination of him and Easterwood throughout the year, but Yost was a little ahead of him. 26 starts for Yost, 17 for Easterwood. Uh, but I think like you said, Anthony, with how well he played in the playing game, that's why I think coach Heff went back to, went back to Yost and probably sticks with him. And we will have to watch and see the Railers used Kulhanek in game one against the Rough Riders. They use LaPierre in game two, right? Mm. I think we know for the Avalanche, for the for the Express, for the Rangers, we know who the goalie's going to be, what was likely, maybe even the Chiefs, for every game the rest of the way, right? Curious to see if the Railers do that again here in the Central Division Finals because it could mean that both goalies are very well rested um, for the Frozen Finals, right? But that's the mm-hmm. Central. Uh, game one is the day that we're dropping this on the 15th. Game two is Friday the 17th. We need to get this podcast out so badly that they don't have game three scheduled yet. They're still working on that, right? So keep an eye on the league website for that. But that's the central, right? Let's go. Let's stay kind of in that region next and go east, uh, which first that gives us the the Express versus Wizards, which um, probably thankfully uh, we did not have another three overtime game. Uh, this year between those two teams i don't think anyone could handle that like last year that was the craziest ever the longest game in league history i think it was 117 117 minutes minutes, yeah so i mean it's still nothing against matt gover he still fought like hell for for the wizards but ultimately um i don't know i I guess it's the, the question for you guys is where does this express team compare to last year's right i feel like we're in the same exact place where Bosch hurts getting hot. The team is looking pretty good, but they're up against the same horse that they ran into last year in the Rangers. And is this year's team better than last year's team or is it the same? Uh, I don't truly think we know the answer to that. Tyler Rago might know the answer better than all of us. <laughs> um, so we'll have to ask him in the in our group each guys know what to see here today. But I don't know. I mean, just kind of looking at the the names and guys that have kind of popped in that like Louis Matthew Riel. I know Tyler did a great interview with him. He scored a couple of goals. Uh, Sauerbaugh, who's good towards the end of the season. Marcus Torgner, the guy I know really well. Um, he had three points in two games. So, I mean, they're all going to have to consistently keep that up. And I mean, Nolan McDonough was a guy that was great for them down the stretch, late season edition. He didn't get any points in the first round. So maybe he steps up. I don't really know. I don't know if this team is the same. Because because look at last year. I mean, me and Tyler talked about it on the Frozen Finals broadcast. What was it? Five out of their six goals scored during the Frozen Finals were from <laughs> defensemen? Defensemen, yes. yep. <laughs> from defensemen. Yeah. So, I don't know. If we go in the NHL record books, how many uh, <laughs> Stanley Cups were won with all your the majority of your goals scored by defensemen? Well, I, I do I do think this year the, the team is better offensively, w- without a doubt. The only question is how much better offensively. Yeah. And you know, can, can they outscore enough. the the Boston Junior Rangers? I think they can, and and I think as long as you have someone like Jack Bosher between the pipes, even if the offense isn't as great as the Express may hope it it will be in this series, you've always got a shot. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I I do think the Express could very well go back to the Frozen Finals. It won't be easy going up against the Boston Junior Rangers again, but. No. Uh, I I do think this team is better offensively this season, without I, a doubt. I, I guess probably the feeling our best goaltending matchup. Bosch oh, for Fulak. sure, Bosch River feel like is a fen- phenomenal matchup. And I I yeah. guess for me, the deja vu side of all this is last season the Rangers won three of the four regular season matchups against the Express, and then the Express won both in a row, a sweep of the Rangers in the playoffs in the in the East Division Finals, right? Fast forward right. to this year, the Rangers won all four of four regular four, season four. matchups. And mm-hmm. then again, the same thing. Maybe it's not a sweep this year, but the Express have to come up with two wins again. More wins in a shorter amount of time than they did all season to knock off this team to go to the finals. So, I mean, put it this way. I think we said it on this podcast that it felt inevitable that these would be the two teams. And the Seahawks, That's Wizards, it. and Warriors all had moments – where they gave us a glimpse of maybe it's us, right? But it felt yep. inevitable that there would be these two teams and feel like versus Bosher, let's have some fun, right? That's It's going to be a great series. That one is Thursday, Friday, Sunday. Of course, even though the Express didn't have a single win over the Rangers in regular season, they still finished one point higher. Therefore, they're hosting games one and three. So that could be a key. 
Yeah, it could. I mean, I think I think another key too is is Nick Nick Coda. I mean, rookie head coach. He's done an excellent job. Uh, it's a changing in the steed, right? Josh Holmes from out, Nick Coda in. Um, I think Nick runs a little bit different systems wise. Obviously, he's a different human uh, in general. So, yeah, right. I mean, I think that becomes a big different uh, difference maker too, uh, Neil and Anthony. And then we all know Richard Caprio, great coach, battle tested, has yep. the HL championship to his belt. He's been in this around this for a long time. Played Division One hockey at Niagara. He's a very good coach too. Knows how to game plan. Um, so yeah, I mean, could come down to to coaching because I think that's sure. a huge difference maker that people kind of overlook sometimes too. For sure. Yeah, and of course, Rich wants me to acknowledge that I love my symmetry. So for him, back to back four two victories <laughs> against Ooh. the Seahawks. It's funny how it worked out, right? I, I, th- I think I picked the the Seahawks to win that series, and solely because th- that was just like a gut feeling pick where it's like, well, there's going to be at least one upset. Yeah, and right. I thought the Seahawks had a shot, you know, and to their credit, they, the they, they play two close games, but Hey, the Boston junior Rangers are one of the best programs around in the EHL. So yep. not, not surprised to at both levels. See them, and EHL, yep, so. Make that forget that series win. And we'll yep. give you five more minutes, Anthony, until the upset talk. Uh, we'll go to the Ooh. North. All right. So <laughs> we'll go to the North. So, uh, the Avalanche, who I think we all thought were like, hey, like this team is opposite of the Railers, kind of stumbled a little bit into the postseason. Luckily for them, they did pick up a few late wins, but there was a stretch there where they had lost four of five or five of six. And, you know, they made it look pretty simple uh, against Vermont. Um, and, and, and Vermont's you know, as Anthony says, the best fourth place team I think we've ever had, right? Yeah. Um, and, and then Seacoast took care of business against uh, the Wolves. Did, did, did this feel inevitable, just like the Express versus Rangers that we would get Spartans versus Avalanche? I don't know, because like Anthony was just saying, like, I mean, the, the Lumberjacks won the first two games of that season series, and then the Avs took everything from there on out, if I remember correctly. Um so kind of what have you done for me lately? But, I mean, we've talked about Seth Gus and the Lumberjacks, a team that had William Billiquet. He was tied with Jack Washer for the league lead in uh, wins with 21 of them. So you you didn't know if there was going to possibly be an upset there um, because of, like we've said, too, with the Avalanche being so good from the start and just through the whole season, they were so consistent, they didn't really get tested at all. So this was kind of their first test. So I don't know. I was kind of surprised to see uh, the Avs – have such demanding you know wins five two and six one that's right i mean good for them i mean like we said that is a team that is loaded um probably an odds on favorite to be a frozen finals pick but yeah i mean i don't think that was clear as day and then same with the spartans and wolves um they were kind of a mixed bag this year too as far as their results and the wolves had won the most recent regular season game six two and then Spartans blue doors Sparty party it was. Um, we'll see if that holds because now you know Seacoast and New Hampshire didn't play each other till real late in the season, so they know what the uh, the other side has. They played each other when they had their finalized rosters. Uh, and yeah, Anthony, go right ahead. I was going to say I, I think with the Avalanche because Neil, you talked about the Avalanche stumbling a bit in the the final few games mm-hmm. where you thought you were going to jinx them. <laughs> with the yeah. regular season title trophy. I don't want to bring that but, back up. But hey, I, I, I always, the more I work in this league, and, and also when you look at like the 2019 Tampa Bay Lightning when they got swept by the Blue Jackets, I do think a team right, needs Justin. to face some, yes. no, re, no, really. I, no, I do think kidding. a team needs to face some sort of adversity before I heading agree. into the playoffs. And I think where yeah. they had those few losses, it was a reality check of, hey, you know, we need to iron out these mistakes and make sure we play flawless hockey. And not to mention, the Avalanche have a lot of returning players. Kyle Dan, Aiden Hotchkiss, leading the pack offensively. Shane yeah. Prambo was the backup, but you know he was around for that Frozen Finals team last season. And I, and I think for the Avs, you have a lot of guys who are on a mission to uh, get over the hump because Hotchkiss yep. was there when they lost to BJR in 2021 in overtime. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, veterans that have been in the locker room, Anthony, good point that will you know want to get the job done and yeah no i totally agree with that statement and, and i think with the spartans i was a little surprised because i thought with the the wolves with their cinderella run last season i thought maybe they're gonna 
sort of rekindle that magic with, again, a couple of returning players. But credit to the Spartans. You know, we've had a lot of questions about the Spartans and, you know, can they produce outside their their top line with the Preo Max line? Yeah. But it's sort of like Apple Corps last season remember where it's like well if you can defend Callanan Weber and Kobe Walters then you know you should win the game but th- th- that's a big if same thing with the Spartans you know shutting down that top line is not easy plus the Spartans have a really good supporting cast too they got Eddie Mulligan they have Tristan yeah. Fadadad in goal great goaltender and he's moving on to the second round so uh, uh and, and I guess to bring up 2021 again because the Spartans were able to upset them Two years ago, yeah, and I think they're going to look for a repeat. That should be a really, really fun series. Could yep. be, could be the best series of, of the four that we have for the division finals. Of course, that twenty one, twenty two that Anthony is mentioning, the Avalanche still, or sorry, that was twenty twenty one. I should say, the Avalanche still reached the finals via the at large. So four years of the Frozen Finals, the Avalanche have been to all four. This is never a had a frozen year. finals without. We have yeah. never had one without them. So um, mm. before we move to the south, um, the New Hampshire Avalanche Invitational. Yeah, <laughs> that's, what, <laughs> that's what he wants to, us to call oh, it, right? Uh, <laughs> but, but before we move to the south, that was pretty good, Jeff. Um, I do have to acknowledge we have given so much love to uh, LJG over the years. Oh, uh, Louis Joseph, Joseph, Joseph Gernon. Gernon. and Very you know buddy. I love to share these, Jeff. When the players reach out. Um, oh, did he? Yeah, he, he messaged me on Sunday. Just just wanted to thank you for the three years in the EHL. I've loved this league since the first day I arrived. Thanks again. Wow. Right, like that. They the, sign off as LJG. No, so. he, he didn't. Right, but, <laughs> but the message. Great. But it's funny. Like the message before was big weekend for fantasy. Five points for Team OG. It's just it's cool, right? Because the kids yep. they they, 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 they eat it up. They follow along, and it was like, <laughs> all right, that's that's a fun message to get. You know, right after you had just been knocked out of the playoffs, right? But right. um. I think that's the toughest thing when you see a team get knocked out where, yeah. it, with, with those returning players. Yeah. And he's been there for, for three years, like, like I said. So it's, um, but great to get those messages for sure. Um, that brings us to the upsets, Anthony. We got to get to the South. We can't ignore the South. Ooh, um, <laughs> two just phenomenal series. Um, I, I knew that going into Monday that those were, you know, two game threes. Like you look at all the other divisions where, uh, the one seed is alive in every other division, right? The Avalanche, the Express, the Railers, um, and and for both one seeds or for both the top seeds, I should say, Ducks and eighty sevens. They had both won Game One to have the series evened up on, against them uh, on the road in Game Two, and then the pressure turned back up, and they're hosting Game Three, and both teams fall. And I I don't know it, which one we want to start with first, but um. You know, the one that for me, I mean, Maryland to to drop game one and double overtime and then Ooh. win the series like that's like unheard of. Usually that's like the dagger. Like, oh, you just got burnt out in game one. You're probably down and out. Yeah, no, they use it as a rallying cry. I mean, they were, in the, they were in the maybe, game. maybe maybe right. maybe for that double overtime victory. I, I think it, it can work two ways. One, you could be dejected by it. But I think uh, I don't know what Josh Fusco said to his players after game one. But if I were to guess, it was probably something along the lines of, hey, we were neck and neck with this team and we can play these guys. It doesn't matter if we're in the playing game or the number four seed going up against the number one seed. You know, anybody can be anybody in that division. And it's something I've said all season. And sure enough, he got the three and four seeds playing for the division title. (laughs) And, and like we said, too, Team Maryland was two points away from finishing in third and being out of the playing game, and the Little and, Flyers would have been in the playing game. Yep. And just and just happen. like the Little Flyers, Team Maryland was coming in hot. Morley Phillips, and I'll talk about him a little bit more in, in fantasy, but he has looked like a man on fire. He scored a hat trick in the 87's final regular season home game where Chris was doing the play-by-play. I was doing ringside. I mean, Morley looked out of this world, and he has just continued that here in the postseason. Yep. Yeah, both them and the Little Flyers were both on identical five game win streaks to end the season. They were playing both playing their best hockey. It crazy. was um crazy. I, I, on three occasions since since yesterday ended, I've honestly forgotten who was supposed to host game one in the division finals. Because you just I, I'm like I think the Little Flyers are higher seed. They are, right? But like yep. you don't ever <laughs> envision 
at like both the one and the two both getting knocked out, right? Like, like it crazy. didn't happen in any other division. That this is probably I'd have to go back and see. It's probably the first time in league history that this has happened, right? And yeah, we're gonna others, have to look because I think you're right. For the other series, for for the little flyers, you drop game one on the road. Yeah, you, you host game two on Sunday night, and you have this massive crowd. Uh, Joe Sindoni texted me. It was like, it feels like it's right. the 2016 17 like finals when it was Little Flyers versus Junior Flyers. Um, they had Apparently, all the- that was Anthony LaRusso who put that all together, getting yes. L- Lauren Hart for the from the, the Philadelphia Flyers. Flyers. Oh, Alo. Look yeah, at you. like, and, 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 you know, Lauren Hart. We know that, uh, James Witherice got the Oregon going during the game. Yeah. They have all the youth players on the ice for the He's national horrible. anthem. Like I, that Ooh, would I fire me. Just that. that would fire me up too before oh. the game, right? So you I'm know. fired up. Let's go. I'm fired up. Let's I, go. I, I, I will say I do love when the Oregon player joins the anthem singer because for the New Jersey Devils, it's Pete Canarosi on the organ. Usually, whenever Arlette is singing the national anthem at the Prudential Center. Yeah. And it's such a great combination. I actually sent a message to James Witherite on Twitter because, uh, you know, I was listening to the game. He was playing, I think, like some Stevie Wonder in there too. I was just like, oh, He's this is great. Magician. Like, yep. <laughs> so it was – um, I, I know it was, it was probably a, a tough game three for you, Anthony, but what a game three um, at the same time. And, and honestly, all credit to you for the call because the call was not – by any means, not an biased. 87's call. Like that nope. was that was an overtime game winning call. I, I think I, I, th- I think I also have to give a big shout out to Chris Russo ringside. He is one of the best in the league as a broadcaster because he, he was analyzing the play. He talked about Peter Palabona and Ryan Carbach having great games, and then they combined for the tying goal. So he was talking about it before yeah. it even happened, and. I mean, with game three, I, I could, if you want, I could give you a quick little four act play. Go ahead. With the, Let's hear it. <laughs> Let's hear it. Because like, you deserve it. I, I will say that in my six, seven years broadcasting junior hockey with the Titans and the Null and with the 87s, this was the biggest emotional roller coaster over the course of one game I've ever experienced. Now, game wow. two, Phil. That's a lot of now, game two. Holy. In game two, Philadelphia dominated the entire game with that 3 1 victory. They came out flying in the first period again, got a 2 nothing lead, go back into the coach's office, and it seemed like there was some despair where it just seemed like the team had just run out of gas. Mm-hmm. That that was that was sort of the phrase that was being used. Then Patrick Tamarinus cut it to a one-goal game, make it 2-1, and the 87s had a lot of energy. Then they took two penalties at the same time for a five-on-three at the very or with 209 left in the second period. They killed it off technically, but two seconds after the penalties expired, Caleb Cathcart made it a 3-1 game. And then one of our players got a five-minute major for butt ending at the end of the period. So second intermission was anger. How can we take those penalties? That killed all the momentum. But then, and I made the comparison to the championship game last season. The 87s killed off the penalty. Then they scored two goals. Peter Valabona had his best game as an 87, cut it to within one, and then Alex Gamzatov tied it up. So after the third period ended, we're back in the office like, okay, we can actually get this. It's jubilation, excitement. And then two minutes in, that's when Delia scored, and it, it, it was, I guess, dejection. Yeah, and it was it was a hard fought game, but that's a tough way to end the series. I and mean, credit to the little flyers, save, though, right, Anthony? Yeah, Finnegan made oh, a great sh- save with the right yeah. pad on Valabona. And, and for Peter Valabona, he was in the perfect spot to get the rebound. And I don't know how Finnegan got across in time. but could, And I had actually stopped. I had paused in the announcing because in my mind I was thinking, is that shot going to go in? Is this going to be it? And I yeah. wanted to take a, a breath before calling the overtime winner. And then it's just like, wait, no, he actually made the save. Yeah. <laughs> and they're going the other way. And what? just a great individual effort from Dalia, too, was a one on yep. three. He, he was hot at the end of that, at, in that second half. So was Finnegan. Finnegan and, De- uh, and Delia both have a huge, and Kobe Howitt, and of course, Anthony LaRusso and Mark Hatchman and Mike <laughs> Narragan, too. But but those, those guys really played a massive piece in that like second half storm up the standings. And, and then look at that. They make the they're the deciding factors. In you, you know, you know, goals I thought was really person. good. I mean, Andrew Henry was cleared by the doctors the morning of that game three, 
Okay. He was great. He was great. You know, there was some worry that he was going to be rusty, but also Jack Costable. Yeah. He oh, he, yeah. Dan- he danced good. around like two of our defenders to create a two on O, and he set up Cole Oriani for the opening goal. I, he, he looks like another forward just as a defenseman. Yeah. Like his, his hands are just insane. And I think that, you know, he and Henry are two guys to watch out for in the blue line for this upcoming series. For sure. And it's just funny how a save like that leads to the goal, right? It just always feels like that in overtime, right? It's either like it's going to be one of those scrappy goals off a shin pad or something, but whenever you see a save like that, you're like, oh, wait, it's definitely going the other way now. And and I, I remember watching it live, Anthony, I was like, he just had his chance. That was just their chance. Did not, I did not think it would go right up the ice and score in that exact transition, but it sets up Maryland versus the Little Flyers uh friday saturday monday and also if um, i'm not mistaken that's the first time team maryland has advanced to the second round uh yeah, yeah. i believe you i believe you're correct that was because i was thinking about that the other day randomly that josh has been to the frozen finals but that was with wilkesbury scranton right the knights back yeah. when thomas walker made yeah. his big illustrious debut well because so they Josh actually played in the COVID. They, pl- they played their two playoff games in the COVID season the little flyers won and I think Josh had texted Mark Catron saying, well, your season's over too because yes. everything got shut down. Yes, you're then the right. Year man, after, yes. Then the year after, the 87s won in the first round. And then the Little Flyers won in the first round last season. So to this set is up year that 87s. for Maryland? 20, 21, 22. Is this oh, year no, three or four for No, because 2018, four. 2019, they joined four. the same year as the 87s joined the EHL. Yeah. I don't uh, think okay. they, they they didn't even make the playoffs in their first season because they struggled a bit, but yep. they really turned it around once they brought in Josh Fusco. Oh, yep. for sure. And like I said, that's Friday, Saturday, Monday. So we have, again, just to recap, Railers versus Chiefs, Wednesday, Friday, to be determined. Um, <laughs> it will be Saturday or Sunday. They're just working out the details. Yeah. And then for both the Express Rangers and for the Spartans Avalanche, they're both going Thursday, Friday, Sunday. And then for Maryland Little Flyers, they're going Friday, Saturday, Monday. So we could know as early as Saturday who the four teams are, hmm. or we could know as late as Monday who the four teams are, right? For those that are looking ahead to the Seeds that they will be in Providence. Whoever wins the Avalanche versus Spartan series will be the number one seed because they had the first and second best records in the league. There's no debating that, right? Uh, It was like 71 points and 64 points off the top of my head, right? So whoever wins that series is the number one seed. Uh, After that, if the Railers win, they are the two seed. They are locked in. They finished with 64 points also, but I think Seacoast had the tiebreaker, or 62 points, I should say. Seacoast uh, also did have the tiebreaker, but they are right there as the two seed. And then 61 points express, 60 points Rangers, right? So follow me on this. The North seed, no matter what, is the one. If the Railers win, they are the two, meaning the East is automatically the three, and then the winner of the South would be the four. All right. The only way the winner of the South is not the four is if the Chiefs pull the upset over the Railers. That way the Chiefs become the four and the winner of the South becomes the three and the East goes up to the two. Right. But though, but you have to look at that because this is who you're going to face when you get there and a best of three. And after that best of three is the championship game. Right. So just one, you, you want to get through your series first, of course, but just so those teams that are still alive, the elite eight, if you will, have an idea of what what's to come. That's what seed you could be. So again, hmm. North is locked into the one. Railers would be the two if they go. East is probably the three, but could be the two if the Railers get knocked off. And then the South would be the four, unless it's the Chiefs who pull the upset, who would then take the four spot. So the way this your... year has gone, come on, more upsets. Yeah, yeah you never know. Confuse you never us all. Know, Just confuse right? us all. But Neil, good job doing that. So for anyone that wants to call you or text you or email you, <laughs> no need. Just rewind back at this portion of the episode, listen to it a couple of times, and you're good. All I right? actually did it laying in bed last night, Jeff. I was like, let's just Perfect. Right, so that's them, then that over here. Like I just got it all laid out in my head, right? Yep. That way, because you know what's funny is the, the the second the horn sounds for one of these uh series this weekend. What seed are we? 
Mm-hmm. I'll, tell you. <laughs> the I'll tell you right now what stage you are like go listen to the episode so, that's what you like we said you just did your work ahead of time so go listen to episode 159 fast forward to whatever minute we're on 31 32 and just yeah. why didn't listen to it you're good so while the ehl up until the two south series felt kind of like chalk in a way right not many mm-hmm. upsets um the ehlp Took Destroyed. us on a on a, on a four <laughs> stage roller coaster, Anthony. Um, we'll start. We'll just work. Ever. We'll work our way north to south. We'll start New England Division. I mean, we still have to give Adirond- Adirondack all the credit in the world for a great season. Um, but wow, like wow from the Avalanche to be trailing three one in game two after having won game one and, and and basically staring another bus trip to New York in the face. You you get within a goal, you tie it, and then you win it all in a six minute span. Mm-hmm. And the game winning goal with five seconds left in regulation. Like it's like wow, like I like no words can't describe what just took place. And I mean, still again, Adirondack, like a phenomenal, phenomenal season. Um, but I, I mean, that is as hard of a opening series loss as I could even imagine. I, right? I will I will say because like. Considering how strong that division was, I don't know if I necessarily even call it an upset because the Avalanche P team has been great all season. True, you know one th- one through four, like, uh, like the Avalanche are probably a better team in the EHLP than Team Maryland was in the the EHL in terms of teams who have played in the playing game. Fair, where uh, I, I think that was a toss up, and, and I don't think you can call that. An upset, really not not like what the Express almost did to the Junior Rangers. <laughs> yes, uh, no, you're right. Sure. I mean, we we have all kind of agreed that one through four in New England, like the standings, the way they finished with Adirondack at 66, Vermont 59, Wolves 56, as 52, all those being their points. Uh, yeah, I mean, there there started to be kind of some discrepancy between the Adir- Adirondack and New Hampshire points wise, but I think you're right, Anthony, that. You got to look at more than just the stats and you look into the actual teams themselves. And I would agree with that too, that the avalanche weren't a true underdog, but on paper they were listed as, as so but yeah, to win five, nothing at CIA, your favorite arena, cool insuring arena. <laughs> I'm sure there was a good crowd there. I didn't get to see, but yeah. I'm sure there was a good crowd. Like that's, Ooh, that's a, that's a good game one win. And then four, three in the roller coaster game too. And that's it. Yeah. I can't. Crazy. It's just crazy. That's another, I mean, again, want to look up history. We probably never have had two play-in winners yeah, in the same year to... advance to, to, to the, to the second round. And, and the Avalanche. Aren't they both are... the same score. Was it an app seven, one didn't Maryland win seven, one versus Philly too. Uh, We're going to keep a symmetry think... here. Whoa, Jeff. Whoa. Yeah. I think they were You're the same right. score. Seven, yes, one, seven, the one. Same play-in wow. score. Shut up. Wow. Now the, their their first round scores were different, right? Because Maryland went to three games with a double overtime. Avalanche had their two game series with a goal with five seconds left. But yeah, you're right, Jeff. Both uh, play in games were seven to one. Oof. So, and the Avalanche are now sitting and waiting for the game that can't take place yet because of this snow that's taking place outside. Yeah. Um, but I will we will acknowledge yeah, both the Wolves and the Lumberjacks have both said that they would host game one against the avalanche on friday if they win game three tomorrow right so um it's tba hosting the avalanche which is this it's kind of like hard to wrap my head around because we've never had that before either um Where the avalanche, team's waiting but it's like no you're going on the road still because you're yeah and the avalanche are lined up to host game two on sunday and then whoever wins again tomorrow the day that we're dropping this podcast would host game three on monday so um, for that Wolves Lumberjack series going to game three, each team has won on home ice. For the Wolves, that victory for them was the first win in six tries Ooh. against the Lumberjacks this season. The Lumberjacks had won all four regular season matchups. And That's I learned right. this from Anthony's tremendous story. Um, it wasn't too long, Anthony. It was I know you were concerned about the length of the article. It was great. Um F- five thousand words. Yes. <laughs> But you pointed out that in the four matchups in the regular season, Vermont won all four. Um, but you were saying I think two or three of them went to overtime. So I mean, a bounce here or a bounce there probably looks different, and it it probably is much more of an even season series 
than the Close, four to closer one. than what the record implies. Yeah, right. And then four to one in Vermont's favor going into game three. But hey, you know what? If it's anything like the first three game threes that we've had, right? Where Maryland Maryland, you know, beats ProTech on the road. We had an overtime at Jersey Shore Arena. We had a two to one game, Chiefs over Rhode Island. Tomorrow, the day that we drop this podcast, should be pretty good between the Wolves and, and the Lumberjacks. And real quick, just if it's anything like their game two, the Wolves were up 5-1 at the end of the second, and then the Lumberjacks scored three unanswered to make it 5-4, and then the Wolves scored an empty netter to win 6-4. Yeah. So, I mean, that was kind of a roller coaster game. Go up 4 nothing, 4-1, then 5-1, and then finish 6-4. Yeah, that's wild. I, I think that should be the name of this episode, just roller coaster of a uh, postseason yeah roller coaster through, roller coaster through march yeah yeah something like that for sure <laughs> uh so that's that's the new england division for the boston division um i have been asked see, see i'm gonna get a few texts after this i have been asked numerous oh, times yes yeah, so i've been asked numerous times that as a result of adirondack <laughs> does the series quote unquote matter anymore between the rangers and railers technically <laughs> by 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 if oh, you're going to Pro- the... Providence standards, no, it doesn't yeah. matter because they're both going, right? Because now the Rangers are still the regular season champion, right? Which means if they win the series, the Railers are the at large. But if That's it's right, flipped, Ron was second. Yeah, yeah. Right. If it's flipped, because it's you're, you'll see the Railers are tied with the 87s for points, but the Railers own yeah. the tiebreaker. Then the Railers are the at large. So the series itself, quote unquote, doesn't matter because. Both teams are going to Providence regardless, right? Mm -hmm. But for all Rangers and Railers fans and players and staff that are listening, it matters. (laughs) Please know that if you lose this series, you are the number four seed. So it definitely matters. Therefore, therefore, you are the road team in all three round robin games, and you are then the nightcap on Friday and the first game on Saturday, right? So that means. On, on Thursday and Friday, the games are five and eight, five and eight, and then Saturday we go eleven and two. So as the four seed, you're in the eight o'clock game on Friday, and then back at it at eleven o'clock a.m. on Saturday. So again, maybe I'm talking too far in advance, just like I was with the seeds for no. the NHL. But you have to have this in your <laughs> mind. Be- you yes. have to because the Avalanche last season won the regular season title, right? But because they lost to the Lumberjacks in their division finals, they became the four seed. So they had to play on Friday night, and then they had to win their way in Saturday morning against Vermont. Anthony, you called that game. It was a phenomenal oh Saturday God. morning game. Yep. And and then ultimately, they get back to the championship game, but maybe that whole quick turnaround too much. What was a little bit tiring for them against the team that was the number one seed, and you get 33 seconds into overtime, and Mike Pichetto scores the game winner, right? So, again, if I'm the Railers and Rangers, I the last thing you want <laughs> is injuries, right? The last thing you want yeah. is injuries in this series, but you, you do still have something to play for. Well, it, Huge. well that's you know, a lot if, of stuff if, if to anybody, play for. If anybody texts you, if if the series matters, just send them a link to this podcast. Again. <laughs> and just, and just tell them point. to scroll to the 36-minute mark or yes. whatever time we're at now. So, the Railers knocked off the Warriors in two games uh, to get – themselves back to this uh, Boston division final. Um, and we talked about Nick Piazza already. Um, we can talk about him again if we need to, but <laughs> I mean, three, one goal games, they were, they were under five minutes away from pulling off arguably the biggest upset in league history. Um, Rangers the express we're talking about now. Yeah. The express. Yeah. I mean, yep. the Rangers are defending EHLP champions, four time regular season champions, three time playoff champions, um, the Express win game one. They lose by a goal in game two. They're up one nothing for what felt like an eternity in game three. Um, I think Jim McCabe referenced him as the evil empire the other day. <laughs> Excellent. But they mean, just what, always win. What a They're series, always there. though. Like, what a series. Like, yeah. like three one-goal games. The last one goes to overtime. Um, all credit again to Nick Piazza for, for giving the Rangers – everything that they could handle and for for a while i was like are we gonna legit have both adirondack and the rangers arguably like the two 
best P teams all season long. Just be both deleted. Knock it out of the first round. See you next year. <laughs> I, I mean, the, the biggest fans, Anthony, in that Express Rangers overtime yesterday were the Huntsman and 87s. Yeah. Because, because if that series ends a certain way. If, if, the, if the Express won and then the Railers won their series, then the at large would go to either yeah, like, the 87s it, or the Huntsman. It's just, it's yeah. crazy to think about. Like it, the domino effect, you know, to say that the at large went to a team that finished like seventh or eighth. In the league standings, it's kind of like, wait a second, how did that happen, right? <laughs> but but that's the roller coasters that the P took us on this past week. So again, though, for the third straight season, um, we have Railers versus Rangers with a ticket mm. to Providence on the line, right? Stop it's me if you've one, heard it before. It's mm. one to one. Yeah. Okay, so again, I guess you could say each team wins this season because they're both going, but there's. I'll give one team one and a half versus one after this week after the series is over. Right. Um, and you got should... newer coaching staffs too for both yeah, sides. Of course, of course. For, you know, John Fine Lease and Tyson, and yeah. So you got you got you definitely have stuff to play for, like you just profiled Neil. There's yep. a lot to play for. Just comes down to pride. Who wants to be the top dog out of the division? Both of those teams do. So you 100%. win that series, and you can claim that you are the top dog of your division so yeah there's definitely stuff to play for for those uh for those boys in the boston division for sure And the number one seed again remember the number one seed in providence which leads us to our last division our seventh division mid-atlantic in the ehlp huntsman versus 87s well you got you got something anthony anthony take it away (laughs) well we were talking about the express nearly getting the upset i think we also need to talk about the new jersey renegades Nearly yeah, yeah. upsetting the Pennsylvania yeah. Huntsman. Cliff Graziano and his team put up a great fight. I mean, you have guys like James Matson and Dylan Idland who are aging out now. Both of those guys scored in you know, some of the games. Uh, Idland had the lone goal in that 3-1 loss in game three. Yep. But uh, also, I think it was Aiden Chaminsky who made 42 saves to get that game one victory. <laughs> wow. So, so we... we oh, we talk about Piazza, but I do think that Shaminsky deserves a lot of credit himself because the Renegades are a team that usually will see a lot of shots coming their way, and Shaminsky was up to the task for it. Yeah, especially after the Huntsman beat him 7 nothing in Game 2. I mean, you would think with the Huntsman <laughs> being as good as they are that Game 3, you just say, all right, yeah, this is we're just outmatched for too much. Nope. They played the Renegades had the lead. Yeah. yeah. It was Idlund who scored first. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah. Earlier on this podcast, I mentioned how I think we all love how hockey over time, like you just never know when it could happen, right? Like oh, it hurts for, so fo- bad, for football, the, oh. there's a there's a play clock, the, the time runs out, like you, it, there's it, it, there's a build up, right? For baseball, there's a you know when the pitch is coming. Basketball, there's a clock there, right? For hockey, you just never know when the goal is going to come, right? It could come after a big save on one end and then down the other end. Why just, is it... just rub it in, Neil. Just well, no, rub no, no. it. I, I, I'm, ta- I'm gonna, to get back to this story, I mean, to this series, I should say. Why is it that whenever there's a, a blowout in one game, the next game is never that way, right? Like seven nothing in know. game two. Like, okay, is the series over? Like, like maybe. But then the Renegades score first, and the Huntsmen after that first period were probably like, oh my god, is our season gonna come to an end? Well, why? Like for some reason, overtime is unpredictable, but then there are common occurrences that we just always see. Maybe it's the unwritten overtime hockey dictionary out there or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm still I'm still sore and broken from my Northeastern Huskies getting beaten four minutes in <laughs> overtime versus Providence in the hockey score finals the other night. That's why I'm wearing my Northeastern sweatshirt to support my boys today. I was getting all sorts of texts of. Uh, my face, I looked like a, I was at a funeral because Providence decided to celebrate in front of the Northeastern bench, which is right in front of my PA booth, and I was just stunned. My mouth was wide open. That was that was something. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't love playoff overtime. I forgot how much of a like literally everyone just sits there and is like, oh, uh, guys. Uh, I, I will I will happening? say when when the final buzzer sounded in that third period yesterday between the 87s and Little Flyers, and at the start oh, of overtime. My legs were literally shaking. Yeah. Like I could barely stand. I actually had to go into the coach's office and sit down in one of the locker stalls that they have in the coach's office because I was just like, "This is too much." Rest yeah. up, yeah, it is. It's an adrenaline rush. You're not. It's it's crazy. 
It's great though. At the same time, right? It is. Um, it is. I know. It's ugh, we're like we're drug but, addicts. But hey, hockey, I mean, go, going back to the, drug. the e- going my back veins. to the EHLP playoffs. At least with with that eighty sevens little flyer series. That that was a little more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't was... know if I want to say predictable, but it, it went. It Ju- went... Juliana was great too for the little flyers. We're talking about goalies, because the little flyers took that one nothing lead in game one. And I think for the 87's P team, they had those nerves for a little bit. And it wasn't until they got those first one or two goals where they really sort of settled in because, I mean, Juliano was standing on his head for those two games. For sure. For sure. And we will recognize that in that game two, I want to say, was the shutout. Is that correct, Anthony? Uh, the game two of the Little Flyers 87 series was the 5 nothing shutout? Yeah. That was uh, Jason Larico and net for the 87's. And with that shutout becomes the all-time leader in EHLP history. That's right, because he got more than one. So he has well, he has one shutout it's, this postseason, right? Right. But, but he now has seven all time, right? Which no goalie in EHLP oh, that's history what it was, was has ever one. had seven. So yeah. um a can shout he get out two? to him. Can he, he get two? We've never first one we, with two. Yeah, we've never had a goalie in the EHLP with more than one shutout in one single postseason. Also, so. no pressure on uh, Connell McNeilis in the 87s, but, you know, if the Premier can win, we've never had an 87 list. We've talked about the Avens. I don't think we had, had an 87 list postseason Premier EHL since they became in the league. That's They've been there point. every year, Premier or EHL. I think you're right, Ant. Uh, Wait, the, the 87s P team? No, he's no, saying, saying as an organization. Your, as an organization. One of the teams has oh. been, there. been there. Yeah. Well, we were saying with the streak with the 87 or uh, EHL. Because they, they, weren't, they weren't there in 2019. Well, we, didn't, we didn't have a finals. In oh, we didn't have a final. 2019 20. No, That's I'm talking about 2018 2019. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So not 2018 2019, but the, to, every year right, after that. So Jeff's point since then, every season we've had one. Two in a row, the 87s have been there. Yeah. The first year they were both there, the PTM won. This past year, just the EHL team was there uh, in the EHL one. So actually, they, there's your point, Jeff. Two seasons in a row, we've had an 87s champion. At all least that at, one of, at one of the levels, there actually, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. really, all the pressure's on, Connell. There you go. <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry, Connell, love you. <laughs> there you go. So, um, but they get the Huntsman uh, for the Mid Atlantic Division, and just like what will be the New England Division, one team from each series is going because we know that there's two teams going from the Boston Division, both the Railers and both the Rangers. Um, the Rangers did put it in their Twitter or their tweet, I should say that the ticket was already punched, which, okay, go play, this, go play this series still. But anyways, oh, but... I think that's a good uh, update to take a breath on on Whew. seven days of playoff action, right? Um, which now will get us to the final seven days of fantasy action. Oh, so that's let's interesting. To, let's Whew. go to the E-Crew Fantasy Challenge. It's time for the E-Crew Fantasy Challenge. The E-Crew Fantasy Challenge is presented by BioSteel, the sports drink of the EHL. Use the promo code ESHOW, that's E-S-H-O-W, for 25% off when you check out at BioSteel.com. All right, so (laughs) this... It got interesting. Yeah, I mean... It's a race. Let's recap the points first for Team H and IB. A pair of assists for Ben Sauerbaugh, that's four points. Uh, Kyle Dan just loves the postseason. So two goals, three assists, one power play point for 13 fantasy points. The Danimal. Yep, he's nasty. <laughs> okay, Jake. Uh, Miles, <laughs> Miles Kid with a goal, Here's my two, son, as- yeah. two assists, and a power play point for eight points. Woo. Eddie Mulligan, three goals, one assist, two power play points, and a game winner. For oh, 14. Miles Kidd, proud of uh, North Massachusetts. Just got to throw that in. Yep. My hometown. Love it. Love Four, it. Thank you. 14 Miles. fantasy points for Eddie Mulligan. Zach Pappas said everybody else is doing something, so I'm good. Uh, <laughs> and then Jack Botcher was like, let's just get two wins. I'm Mr. Postseason. Give up one goal, get another oh shutout, 64 saves, 21.8. So overall, oh, Bosh. Ouch. 60.8 points, Jeff. Woo. So I. When I was telling, we did up, okay too. Well, but they and that was the thing. Like when I was telling up their points, I was like, "Ooh, that's a lot to to deal with." Uh, Graham McDougal got us a, a, an assist for two points. Brett Beal three goals and assists, power our play point, and two game winners, fourteen yep. points. Tanner Contier three goals, including one game winner for ten points. 
a power play assist for Adam Drubran for three points, a goal and an assist for Mason Henney for five points. Uh, the Adirondack series did not help us in goal. Oh, Kean. Uh, he has yeah. Kean Hodgins dropped that opener. Still got his 1.4. But, Jeff, you take away our six goals, three of which were game winners uh, between Brett Beal and Tanner Contier. That is 21 of our points, those six goals. Hmm. So we we dodged a little bit of a bullet here because we had yep. we got, so we got, 35.4. <laughs> we still got 35.4. And the deficit is 39.6 going into the final week. So I'm not saying it's over, Anthony. You gotta be to outscore us. You gotta beat us by 40 by 40 points, right? How do you do it in the final week? This would this would be an incredible comeback again. <laughs> A game three comeback. Yeah, this is <laughs> a, a sla- slash a choke job by us. But anyways. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, I guess before I name the picks, I have to give a shout out to our hockey operations you know, that, that make up team HNIB, Jake Basile, Tyler Arago. I know we've gotten some help from Trevor Blackburn as well. Uh, it, it was It's so fun working with those guys, and I'm really looking forward to working with them again for the Frozen Finals. But uh, our final week of picks – we're going to go back to Kyle Dan. I mean, you said it best. He's Mr. Postseason. He has five points in those two games, two goals, three assists. I think he's definitely going to keep it up in this upcoming series against the Spartans. And then I talked about him earlier in the show. Morley Phillips picked up the hat trick against the 87s in one of their final regular season games. He has six goals in four games played so far in the postseason. I think he's this year's version of Kyle Dan where yeah, uh, maybe not in the, the sense year. where he, he – not in the sense where he's coming out of nowhere. I'll say but, he had a better regular season than Dan had a regular season yeah, last year. Like I get he, what you're saying. He's though. just having this incredible playoff run. And I Young don't player think too. he's I don't think he's showing any signs of slowing down. I think no. he's gonna like the little flyers are gonna have to watch out for him. And I think that he's only an 04, Anthony, too. Yep, he's he, young. He is. You'll see him years to come. Another 04. We're gonna go with some EHLP picks. Hunter Atkinson, 53 points in 42 regular season games. Nine points in three playoff games, <laughs> five goals, four assists. That is insane. That it's is a hat trick crazy. A game of points. Uh, there, there, there are so many words I can describe. Like, I, 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 there are not enough adjectives to describe his postseason run. Super califragilistic, expialidocious. <laughs> that's that's how good his run is. So he's a no brainer. Got to have him on our fantasy team. Another EHLP pick, Aiden Swain. And I think he is a defenseman. Yes. Yep. Yeah. He Swain has trade. five five Swain train has five points in two games, had three assists in that deciding game two against the Valley Junior Warriors. I think he'll put up some more points against BJR. Staying with the Railers, also on defense. We're gonna go with Corbin Mealy. He has two assists in two games. I think that he can step up his game a little bit against the, the Chiefs. So that's why I'm confident in picking him for Team HNIB. And then in goal, we're going to go with Lincoln Crosby. Has a 966 save percentage in two games, including a 33 save shutout in that deciding game three against ProTech. He played for 91 minutes in that double overtime game. He saw uh, 52 <laughs> shots out of the 55 feet face. Jeez. Again, I I, th- I think he's going to be the go-to goalie in that series against the Little Flyers. Should be a good one to see who will represent the South Division. So I'm going to have to go with Crosby here. The 87s guy couldn't pick a Little Flyers goalie. Noted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, I didn't. I, I could have picked someone from the 87s P team. This is true. This is true. He could have gone with the all-time shutout leader. He could have. Um, a couple of railers in there. That must have been Jake Basile, huh? Yeah, hockey ops. <laughs> Anyways, we'll, we'll, go, President. We'll, go, we'll go to our picks now for Jeff and I. This is to clinch it, Jeff. So all right, let's go, um, old guys. Let's get I mean, as long as we don't, ready. as long as we don't put up a, a goose egg, I think we should be good. Yeah, uh, so we up front, we're going with OT winner uh, Tristan Delia for the Little Flyers. I think last time we picked him, he didn't have any goals, but he had like nine assists, like twenty five assists. Like yeah, it felt like that, right? Uh, it's Johnny Appleseed, apples yeah. everywhere. Plenty of railers being represented this week. We're picking Nate Palumbo up front um, yep. but for, speed, for speed, the railers. Speed. And then Max Finkelday had a huge series for the Huntsman over the Renegades. He'll have to have um, maybe even a, 
even bigger series against the first, 87s. First year playing ice hockey. Yes. That's insane. Yeah. That's a shout-out to Joe Sandoni, too, who texted us about Finkel Day. And, yes. Uh... He had that great article about, you know, coming over from, from Africa. So um, yep. that's going to be uh, our forward unit uh, on defense, J.J. Creighton. Hope Your he boy. gets some more uh, empty netters when he's up at the far <laughs> blue line. I'm not sure if you guys have seen this empty netter from the from game two against the Ducks. He's like the play is over on like in front of the benches, going towards the Maryland end, and then it comes over to the near side, and he's like by himself on the blue line. I'm like, should the defenseman be there? I I don't really know, but if he's he wants like, to oh, get I'll a few, if he wants to get a few more of those, then that would be awesome. Um, and then a recent addition, Adam Nadelka for the Rangers came in right before the deadline. Um, he's a beast. He is a big kid. So secret weapon. Yeah. Uh, he should be a key, a key factor in that series with the, uh, express. And then in goal, we're going with Tristan Fatadad. I know. Interesting pick for us, but I like it. He's well, going to see I, shots. He's going to get us the least the saves. You know, the abs are going to pour yeah. 30, 40 shots a game. If, if this is the Could first year, games. yes. If this is the first year that the avalanche are not in the frozen finals, right? We've had four of them that this is the, the first time they don't make it, he's the difference maker. It will probably be because of him, right? Yeah. So we're going to go with Tristan Fadadad in goal again. It's a thirty-nine point six point lead for us, and this is the last week. We're not going to have fantasy picks in Providence. So, Anthony, if you guys beat us by forty points this week, then then hats off to you. Like that would be that would be a, a gut punch. That for would us. suck. I mean, <laughs> Jeff and I, Jeff and I may not show up to Providence, but yeah, we might just <laughs> deuces. <laughs> yeah, but now we'll wrap this all up with what to watch for. Before we wrap things up, here's what to watch for this week in the E Show. What to watch for is presented by Hockey TV, the official streaming platform for your EHL and EHLP action throughout the 2022 2023 season. Every game. All right. See you guys next week. <laughs> pick one, <laughs> pick one of the seven oh. series. Just pick one. Four in the EHL, three in the EHLP. Just pick. Give me the series that you're – when you look at the seven of them lined up, what one catches your attention first? It's Spartans' abs for me because, like you said, our, is this going to be the year we don't see the abs? I don't know. Chris, big guy, we love you. Yeah. I don't know. Is it? Does Brett Schreider and the Spartans have enough in their tank? Got real hot at the end of the year. We'll see. I think that's the one that I'm most interested in for sure. Anthony? There's so many different series to choose from. I mean, I, I could very easily just say the South Division final between the Little Flyers and Team Maryland. Because mm -hmm. I, I think those are two teams that we talked about, both very hot coming into the postseason. I think two different styles of play. I, I do think that Josh Fosco's team certainly plays that kind of playoff brand hockey. They play heavy. They play hard. But they've also got the skill now to match up with it. Yeah. That's that's where you're going with. You're going with that one. Yeah. Okay. I'm you, gonna yeah. I'm gonna go bold and create um, some fuel in the league. Okay. Mm. I'm mm. gonna go with Avalanche versus whoever they're gonna play because we still have no idea who it is. Wolves, <laughs> for premier. Wolves or Lumberjacks, right? And I'm gonna go as far as to say that whoever wins that series will be at least in the EHLP championship game. Really? So so mm. there for everyone at home that's listening to that to that they can take that and they could. Run with it as far as they want to run with it. I just think the Avalanche, the run that they're on, if it's them, then then they're going to be back in that title game. Uh, I think the Wolves and Lumberjacks could be two of the most underrated teams in the league. Um, yeah. And and we're what a go turnaround for the Wolves P team! A hundred percent, a hundred percent. From so last whoever, year, this year, yep. whoever wins that game and then faces off against the Avalanche, and I don't know who's going to win that series, but whoever does, whoever comes out of that division. Is going to be battle tested and is going to be ready to be at least in the championship game. We will see. So that's it Good for find out. the second round division final preview. Um, we'll have one of those articles coming out from Anthony that explains why everybody can win. Those are awesome. Um, because again, it, it proved his point, Anthony. You proved your point with a number of teams winning in that first round. Uh, that will be coming out here prior to the Railers versus Chiefs game, which is game one of that series. Our next podcast will drop one week from today, no matter what happens, because 
I kind of have to put my foot down a little bit. We're, the finals are right, are right after the series is over. So yeah. Mother Nature, please, please cooperate. Just please, like Cut it we, out. We, we we're starting the finals on the twenty second, so the second round has to end before. So um, that Frozen Finals preview episode is going to come one week from today. So we'll uh, we'll talk to you guys then and enjoy all the games between now and then. We'll try get your IVs ready. See you next week, boys. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the E Show. Learn more at easternhockeyleague.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Also, be sure to subscribe and get notified when next week's podcast is released.